good afternoon, and I hope this comes to you tomorrow morning. It's Saturday afternoon, about 4.09. And I wanted to tell you today how sorry that I am that we still are under the bondage of this ravaged beast that's among us. And my heart is broken that as we had planned earlier to try to be back in service by Easter, that that's not going to happen. And I, I'm certainly sorry for that. And I'd love to talk to my, my little children today for just a moment, if the Lord would allow me. Uh, I want you to know that Brother Ricky loves every one of you little fellers. And I miss so bad after I dismiss and me trying to get out of the building, how y'all hover around me, grab a hold of my legs and hug me and tell me you love me. I, I miss that so bad. And I'm so sorry that Easter is upon us, the day that our Lord and Savior was resurrected from the dead. And I know on Easter is a day that my children here at the church get to have a part, we, we get to have a, a Easter egg hunt, and they're all so excited of who's gonna win the prize and who's not gonna win the prize, and, and all of them are just full of joy and full of life, and I am so sorry that this year it, it couldn't happen. I know some may mention that, well, we could have a parking lot service, but I've read just different places where other pastors had planned such an event and the law stepped in and told them no, they couldn't do that. So that is the reason why that we're not having services here or having a parking lot service. But you little children, I want you to know and realize that this is not just about your basket on Easter morning. It's not about the candy that you receive. And it's not all about getting to hunt Easter eggs, even though I enjoy getting to watch you do that. That is not the purpose or the reason for this season. The reason for this season is that Jesus Christ was born of a Virgin Mary. And he lived a life that was free from sin and God. And everywhere Jesus went, to every town, every city that he went into, in every country, he healed the sick. He caused the blind to see. He caused the lame to walk again. And after all that good that he had done, they took our darling Jesus Christ and they brought him before Pilate. And the purpose was that he would be crucified on the cross. And that's what they wanted by a determinate council. They meant to kill our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the days before this happened, he had one that betrayed him. And his name was Judas. And Judas will have his part. And it ain't my job to judge that. But Jesus betrayed Jesus into the hands of the Roman soldiers. They took him to Pilate. And that's where I'd like to pick up and begin to read just a little bit to you. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto him, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee? And I have power to release thee. And Jesus answered 
Thou couldst have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee had the, greatest, the greater sin. And from henceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him. Away with him. Crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered him therefore unto them to be crucified and they took Jesus and led him away. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title many of the Jews read for the place where Jesus was crucified was now into the city and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he says, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. And then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier part and also his coat. Now the coat was out without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled which saith, they parted my raiment among them and for my vesture, they did cast lots. These things therefore, the soldiers did. And Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, says, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon a hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost praise the Lord the Jews therefore because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they may be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And another, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. The story from that point on is that Joseph begged for the body of Jesus and they laid him in the sepulcher. One, one that had never been occupied. And there was a saying among the people and among the disciples and Jesus even said himself that he would rise again on the third day. And the king by orders, put soldiers that they would guard the tomb. And there our garden Savior laid. 
nothing at all going on but our darling Savior. There he laid. Then came the day, the third day, and that's where I want to pick up. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and she seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. She runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to other disciples whom Jesus loved, and saith unto him, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went in, went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came to, to the sepulchre first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying yet where he would not in. Then came Simon Peter, followed him, and seeing the sepulchre, and seeing the linen clothes, and the napkin. That was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and saw and believed. For they knew not the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then went that disciple away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked in the sepulchre and see the two angels in white, the one at his head and the other at his feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto him, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid them. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus, praise the name of the Lord, standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, says, Sir, if thou were born him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Then Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see his hands, the print of the nails, put my finger in the print of the nail, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach thy hither thy finger, and behold my hand. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, praise the name of the Lord. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet they believe. And many other signs truly Jesus did in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book.
And listen to this. But these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life through his holy, no, 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 holy name. Praise the name of the Lord. And today I'm so thankful to have the Spirit of the Lord. And I would love to attest that our Savior truly was born of a virgin Mary. And truly he lived 33 years on this earth. And truly he was crucified. And truly on the third day he rose again. And now, saints of God, he is on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for the saints of God. Let's always keep this in our hearts and in our minds. Little children, if God will, we'll have another Easter. To you that do not know the Lord, if I was you, I'd be really, really worried about the day that we're in. I never believed that I would see the time that our doors would be shut and our church walls and the benches and the sound being silent in our church house. But today, that's where we're at. But I can tell you that you don't have to be at an altar to find Jesus Christ. If you'll make your own altar and believe the story that I just told you, the gospel of Jesus Christ, ask him to forgive you of your sins he will appear unto you. And if you will glorify him, he will let you have life and have, blah, 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 and have life eternal. And for that gospel today, we all stand and we all praise and we all give thanks to our Heavenly Father. Once again, let me remind you the day that we're living in. And I, I urge Christians of every faith to pray unto Jesus and pray unto our Heavenly Father that this thing that's among us would be brought to a halt. I hope and pray that you enjoy your day tomorrow. And I hope this will come to you in the morning and you can have a good day afterwards. Know this, Brother Ricky loves y'all. And if I could, I, I would love to have a meeting with you again. And I look to do that in the near future but until we do, let's hold on. Let's keep making contact with one another. And I know you're doing that. I hear that all through my congregation. And that's good and that's healthy. Let's pray for our sick and let's continue to uplift the name of the Lord. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you always. Amen.